This week, it's all about easy water access, remote fishing spots, and of course, enjoying the great outdoors. That's right. Join us as we paddle into the world of kayak fishing here on the Florida Insider Fisher Report, which starts now. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, presented by Yamaha. Welcome to the Florida Insider Fishing Report, Kayak Edition. We're your hosts, Marie Gabrielle, and of course, Captain Rick Murphy, with not only our first live studio audience, but also our friends from Bahio and Yakir in the house. But you know, Rick, you have a special fishing trip to tell us all about, don't you? So, you know, Bree, a couple days ago, I yes. was able to go with one of the former commissioners of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commissioner, uh, Brian Yablonski, and he brought his daughter and his wife and his son, Kim, and the wife and Madison, as well as Connor. Now, this is the cool part. Madison, 24 years old, never caught a fish in this. She starts wow. off with a big mangrove snapper. She caught snook, we caught goliath groupers. How and cool. then Connor caught his first snook. What? So the Yablonski family had a wonderful trip. It got a little windy in the afternoon, but we per persevered and it was a lot of fun and you're gonna see and hear a lot more about them in the future, I promise. That's awesome. You're the perfect person to go fishing with if you're catching your first fish. Why not? I, I can say that from experience. You've caught a lot of firsts with me. <laughs> I have. <laughs> All right, well, let's say hi to Dave Farrell at the CCA Workbench with plenty to yak about, I'm sure. Hi, Dave. Yeah, I'm not doing the yakking. Uh, we're going to let Eric Clark from Yak Gear do all the talking tonight. I'm stealing money. So. Well, that's what I'm doing. That's what you're good at that too. I yes, have to say you're good at that too. All right, let's begin our paddle in the Star Charm Central West region where Captain Jeff Page has our weekend all mapped out. Go for it, Page. All right. Well, as you guys know, in the Star Charm Central West region, and I'm not bragging or anything, but we probably are one of the founding areas that really got kayak fishing on the map in Florida. And it's it's probably due to a lot of good outposts, like in the right in the middle of my region, Economy Tackle Dolphin Paddle Sports, which is located right in the center. And then to the south, there's West Wall Outfitters. To the north, there's Canoe Country Outfitters. And there's many of others, and you can find them online. And they will help you not just with getting the right kayak for what you're doing, but also give you good tips on areas to launch from. Now, the coolest thing about kayak fishing in our region is when you do start finding areas to launch from, usually the fishing's not too far away. And I'll start down to the south, down there around Placida, Boca Grande Island, uh, Gasparilla Island. There's both Gulf side launching and Bay side launching where you won't have far to paddle. As you work your way to the north, South Venice and Lemon Bay and Englewood, same game. You can launch out on the beach side and in the Gulf in the Bay side. And these are legal county and city organized launches. And then when you get up in South Sarasota, a real popular one is around Baymo Road, which is in South Sarasota in Little Sarasota Bay. Really good wintertime kayaking. And then as you get up to the north, Siesta Key, Lido Key, Longbow Key, Braden and Beach, and then the world famous uh, Fort DeSoto area, and then Terracia and Tomasola Bay as well. All good, safe launches and close to your fishing. Now, that with the help of iPhones these days and, and Google Maps, you can pick out areas and choose your ramp and strategize where you want to fish. Plan your trip before you go according to your wind, according to your tides, whatever. The other neat thing I would suggest is to have one or two rods on board, get started with simple stuff like a gold spoon, a couple soft plastics, maybe a top water plug. As you get better, you can have a flow through live bucket behind you with a rope and you have some shrimp, some crabs, a lot of guys tarpon fish along the beach this time of year out of kayaks. It's not uncommon. It's not something I would suggest doing brand new, but as you get better, it's very possible to catch a big tarpon bigger than your kayak. Um, the other thing I like to do in the wintertime is to wade 
wear my waders, my booties, have all my tackle in my chest pack, and bail out of my kayak and either put my power pole micro down or just a little mushroom anchor and get out and wade and walk around the potholes and then go back to my kayak and paddle on and do it again. In the wintertime, it's a good, quiet, sneaky attack on those fish. Uh, I have a couple photos tonight of a really good kayak master, Jesse Wright, out of Betts Fishing Center in the north part of my region with a real nice redfish and a real nice snook he caught in his Kobe kayak. You got a minute left, Paige. All right, speckled trout, Rick. You know what my, I, I'm a trout fisherman. Pilchards uh, have moved in the bay, top water plugs and subsurface like the Berkeley Stick Shack and the Miralure Mirrodine have been doing real good. Uh, on all the deeper grass flats, Garcia Bay north to the Manatee River, uh, south of the Manatee River. Uh, I've got a nice picture tonight of three big trout with three happy clients with Captain Billy Allstrom. Rolling offshore, red grouper, 110 to 140 feet. Live pinfish are the best, but frozen sardines are working, and guys are getting their limit. No trouble. St. Pete, all the way back to Venice. Got a picture tonight with three good old boys with their limited red groupers with double trouble charters out of Cortez and the Cobia. Same kind of water and even in closer artificial reefs off Sarasota, south of Venice. Cobias have been up on top on the pretty days. They're throwing live baits or bucktail jigs at them, Rick. It's not a bad idea to have a bucktail ready, even if you're live bait fishing, because when they come up, you can hit them. And the picture tonight is from Captain Brian Marcy of Breakwater Charters with a nice cobia. All right, Paige, you got it in, bud. Good job. We're just going to go ahead and take a look at the Daiquiri Deck hotspots from the Startron Central West region. Captain Paige says, Good nighttime snook fishing around the bridges and the dock lights from Blackburn Point Bridge south to Venice Jetties. Fish live ladyfish, silver mullet, or big soft plastic swim baits. And then offshore, the big permits are holding in three to seven mile reefs and wrecks off of Anna Maria. Free line live pass crabs are going to be your best bait. Well, I'm out of breath. Now we're talking with the face <laughs> of the Front Runner Boats Northeast region, Captain Tommy Derringer, where paddle fishing of all sorts is welcomed and encouraged. Talk to us, Tommy. That's right. Hey, Bree, Rick, Dave, and live studio audience. You know, hey, the Front Runner Boats Northeast region, it's a great area to get your yak attack on. You know, kayaks and stand-up paddle boards, they're really super popular now in the region these days. And, you know, they're great vessels to access some really cool fishing spots. And we have some huge tides in my region. You know, they range from, can be up to five to six foot of water movement during a six hour period. Now using a kayak to fish from can make getting in and out of where you'd like to fish quite a bit easier than if, uh, than if you were in a boat. Now some areas that are popular places to kayak fish are the Pellicer Flats and Tomoka Basin to the south. Uh, in St. Augustine, we have Guana Lake and in Jacksonville, we have Chickapit Bay. Um, as well as creeks like Clapboard and Simpsons. And you know, it's just a few of the more popular spots, but really, guys, I'm seeing kayaks in about every area of the backcountry these days. You know, there's a ton more access points. Um, there's so many more places to launch than ever before. So um, a lot of good access spots. Uh, it, you know, guys, it gets super shallow in a lot of these areas at low tide around here, and the fish stay in some of those slightly deeper pockets. Uh, even when most of the water is completely sucked out at low tide. Now, being able to fish those shallow areas, even on that low tide, that's one reason so many people are going to the kayak or paddleboard. You know, you can stay in there for as long as you want and not have to worry about getting stuck. Now, on the other side of that, getting access to flooded grass areas during our late summer and early fall flood tides, that can be made easy in a kayak or a paddleboard as well. They draft next to nothing. Now, we've had some really low, low tides this past week been a great week to get after the redfish bunched up in some of the creek holes in the kayak or paddleboard. If you got out there, you probably had fun. And I've got a picture here. This is a huge trout caught by one of Captain Bart Swab's clients while fishing out of the kayak in some super shallow water. Wow, what a that great catch. Insane. Tell us about the All snooks, right, bub. Staying in shore, guys, the snook bite in the south end of my region has been firing up with the warmer weather this week. I spoke to a couple captains that fish around that Daytona and up to the Tomoka Basin. They tell me that the snook have been eating early in the morning around the docks and on the ICW 
or excuse me, on the docks around the ICW and on the shorelines that are holding bait in the Tomoka Basin. Now, a hard diving plug, a soft plastic jerk bait, or a live large shrimp or a mullet, those have all been working really well around those docks. Now, fish in the grass line, top water plugs like the Berkeley Jaywalker at first light, you know, they're in the Tomoka Basin and even all the way up through Palm Coast, they've been working well for those snook. Just find some bait and toss that plug right around the bait. Now, even uh, There's even been a few nice ones caught at the St. Augustine Inlet this week on some live finger mullet. I'm thinking it's going to be a good year for the snook here in the Northeast region. And I've got another picture. Our buddy Captain Chris Herrera sent me this picture of Giovanni Nesby with a nice Palm Coast snook. He caught on a saltwater assassin jerkbait. Good job, go, Giovanni. Yeah, good job. All right, let's go offshore, bub. Yeah, man, the mahi have started to show in decent numbers this week, especially in the south end of the region. You know, the captains I talked to, they've been on a good bite of mahi southeast of St. Augustine. They've just been basically pulling skirted naked ballyhoos, the usual stuff. You're going to want to look for some weeds out there, but any kind of debris, a current edge, temperature break, all those places, all those things can hold fish. Those mahi, they're running about 6 to 10 pounds, but look for some bigger fish to start showing up um, over the next month or so. Now, also offshore, guys, I figured I'd talk Wahoo one more time before what we would call our season is over, although you can catch them kind of year-round here. They're still catching some nice Wahoo offshore. It's a good mixed bag right now, Wahoo, tuna, and mahi um, all in the troll. If you're looking to get in on some awesome trolling stuff, on a great bite offshore right now is the time to go. Look up one of our charter captains. Give them a call. The mahi, tuna, the wahoo, they're all thick, and it should only get better as things continue to warm up. And speaking of thick, I've got one last photo here. This is Captain Jimmy Laidler from thelegendfishing.com, and he's climbing with a 121-pound wahoo they caught east of St. Augustine. Oh, I think what give a, me a call. season closer. Oh gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Thank you so much, Tommy, for hunting down all those great pictures. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the strike zone hotspot from the Northeast region. Tommy says that in shore, you're going to fish redfish on the early morning low tide. Look for the belly crawlers chasing small minnows and shrimp on the back of any of the area creeks. And then offshore, mahis are starting to show up and the better numbers offshore throughout the region try trolling island lures uh, in front of a big horse ballyhoo to catch those mahi. I'm just still drawn for wow. a wahoo. That's crazy. That's how much I weigh. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Come on. Stay with us anglers. Oh, it's uh, time for Dave to break out his bestie yakin' tips with a little bit of help from the Fish Bites Trading Post and rigs oh, and it, techniques for the CCA Workfest. It's a lot more than a little help. Oh, come help. on, Dave. Give yourself Eric's doing all the talking. All of it? Ooh. Yeah. We you better have All the questions it. ready, Dave. I've got a few. All right. All right. Then we're headed to the Alto Equipment Southwest region to do some casting with Captain Oron Houston. We'll be right back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Sirius XM Marine. Weather. Fish mapping. Entertainment. Penn. Let the battle begin. Casa Vieja Lodge, five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Berkeley Prospect Chrome, Fish Bites Trading Post, the first choice of First Coast anglers. Castaway Coffee, one taste and you'll be hooked. And Daiquiri Deck, food, drinks, friends. All right, here we are at the CCA workbench for the Fish Bites Trading Bo Post Rigs and Techniques, my favorite tackle store. And uh, we're talking to Eric Clark from Yak Gear. He's a Hobie Pro fisherman, and he's going to tell us about how to set up our kayak to go out and go fishing. And uh, I'm glad he's doing it because I don't get to get in the kayak very often. I'm a little sure. too large for the kayak. But. Well, safety first, right, Dave? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so uh, once you have your PFD and your VHF handheld radio squared away, you're gonna have to worry about positioning. You know, fishing on the coast, we have a lot of currents, winds, uh, and even some waves to deal with. So the first thing you're gonna want is a deluxe anchor trolley from Yak Gear. This is gonna allow to you to, for you to tie off to anchor um, and then be able to adjust it to the bow or stern of your kayak. And that way, when you do get caught in that wind or current, 
it's going to be facing the correct direction to actually deal with that rather than hitting you from the side and trying to knock you over. All right. Uh, you can, and you can put a stake in that thing or, absolutely. or whatever, even your little mushroom anchor or whatever. Mushroom anchors are great, especially if you're uh, on a river and you want to drift a little bit. It allows it to kind of bump along the bottom. Right. Um, stake out sticks, definitely right through that eyelet there. And uh, same thing to the stern, to the bow going to hold you in place and face you in the correct direction. Positioning is everything. Absolutely. Next, you got something over there, that little flag showing up there. What do we need that flag for? Glad you noticed it. That's what it's there for. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a visibility kit. Uh, anytime you're on the water in a smaller craft, you want to have some sort of visibility up high so other vessels know you're around. Because we're so low in the kayak. Exactly. Very low to the water. Um, not only that, but most states are going to require a 360 light if you're out in a kayak at night. It's probably a good idea to keep that thing on in the daytime even. And some of yeah. the places where I go, like St. John's River and stuff with all the high reeds and whatnot. Sure, as much visibility as possible. I, got I often forget about it and leave it on, so. Exactly. And I, <laughs> and I see there you've got a, a, a super crate. Now you always see a, a regular old milk crate in the back of a sure. lot of kayaks, but this is the Yak Gear special one, right? Yes, sir. So this is going to be the Yak Gear Kayak Angler Crate we just came out with. Um, what's cool about this is you'll see that on the exterior, it's got some tie-down hooks that are all quick release. So when you're ready to get off the water, you can simply pull it out, take all your tackle and gear off with you, along with your four rods. It gives you a way to carry uh, all your rod and reels back to your truck, over to the water hose, so you can rinse everything all down at once. Right. Um, not only that, but it gives you the storage you need. Like I said, tackle trays, it's going to hold at least eight of those. We have a really cool floating, folding, measuring stick. Make sure you're keeping legal fish. And that's really great for if you're fishing in a tournament or whatever too, right? Absolutely. A lot of these catch photo release CPR tournaments are going to require you to have a measuring device. And I noticed that, you know, you've got a paddle on here. I mean, and even though if you're going to be using the pedals, right. you're going to want to have a paddle. And <laughs> this looks like a really nice one. This is one of our favorite products. I'll pop out one half of it here. Uh, the cool thing about the Backwater Assassin paddle is it's expandable. So it'll go from 250 to 260 centimeters. Uh, not only that, but on the blade, you'll see one side serrated for pushing off. The other side has a hook, and that's great for pulling into mangroves, right. pulling into docks. You don't want to do a lot of leaning off the side of your right. kayak, so any any tool you have to the, help. The, the few times that I've been in a kayak, I've had the nightmare of trying to push off with a rounded uh, blade. Oh, it just slips. And or trying to pull in with a with a rounded blade. Yeah, no, good you, luck. You're just hacking and hacking and hacking. Right. So next to you, we've got all these little accessories that you've got stuck on here. How, how do you get those on there? So the accessories are driven off of either a rail mount or in the track system. Like one of these so, things here, Exactly, right? exactly. A few different ways to mount. Railblazer has a really cool quick release mounting system for any vessel out there, whether you need to attach something to a grab bar, a pulling platform, casting deck, or if you want something track mounted that you can adjust and change all the different angles to. Yeah, and this is what they look like, right? When you before you put them on. That is that is one of the many tracks we offer. And yes. you can put this on a on a skiff too if you want to. It doesn't have to be a kayak. You Absolutely. can put this on any kind of. We have vessel. people putting those on skiffs, aluminum bass boats, po uh, even pontoon boats on the dash. Hold their cell phones. You name it. They're putting our accessories and mounts on it. I got you. And I noticed that right there on that in the rod holder there, you got a really nice light tackle rod and reel combo. That's a that's the uh, uh, Penn Battle Three. On the Fenwick, on a Fenwick 7.5 Elite, and that's a really light, you know, light tip, Feels very like fast action. <laughs> yeah, very, very cool for using on a, a kayak because you can cast a long way with that seven and a half foot long. So where are you going to get all this stuff? Uh, so. At all your major sporting good outfitters, all your big box stores, we're in Walmart. Uh, not only that, but your marine and kayak specialty shops, and of course online at yakgear.com. Beautiful. <clears throat> that's perfect, man. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. You know, hey. you know, Eric, we're going to have to get that stuff in the trading post, you know, yeah, fish absolutely. Bites, trading absolutely. Post. And if you ever need a job in television, you did a great job, my friends. <laughs> Dave, tell don't you. even I bother so billing impressed. me. I'm sending the check straight to <laughs> No, never. <laughs> we'll see about Questions that. made it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Now it's time for Captain Ronnie Houston to tell us what we're going to need to know for our next kayak fishing trip in the Alto Equipment Southwest region. Go for it, Ronnie. You know, well, like always, it's a pleasure being here. But I'll tell you what, you know, Kayaking is very popular for catching fish, and I'm actually seeing more of it on the freshwater side, as well of it like it's been on the saltwater side. But I can tell you what, there's plenty of access throughout the whole southwest region, from the Everglades all the way up to Charlotte Harbor. Now, your local canals and lakes 
especially with this time of year, it's kind of odd. The water should be low, but the water is actually high. We've had a lot of water this year. Some of these freshwater canals right now, you can catch the peacock bass bedding along the edges or fish for largemouth bass. But on the saltwater side, you want to concentrate. You don't have to go far. You know, your passes, your intercoastal docks and seawalls. And, you know, right now they're catching snook along the beaches, intercoastal docks and seawalls as well. But you can also catch redfish and trout, and they can be caught along most of our flats and outer Gulf Islands. But one of the key things is going to be for you to go out and catch some fish, just keeping up with the weekly reports. We'll tell you what baits should be used. And if you're interested in learning about what it's about, there are plenty of excursion businesses all throughout the southwest coast of Florida that will lead you in the right direction. I have a picture this week of Paddle Sports of Naples, a nice early morning picture up in the northern end of the region. So if you're interested in any kayaking, contact Paddle Sports of Naples. The inshore side, you know, there's a great bite. You know, the trout right now, there's really no shortage of trout, which I'm glad to see, and it's come back really good in the northern end of the region. Now, areas like the East Wall, Boquilia, Matlache Pass, and Pine Island Sound. Uh, key, the key right now is fishing areas of clean water combined with potholes, grass, prior hair bait, and also diving birds. You want to be in depths of two to five foot of water, but when you get in these areas and you start catching these trout, first thing I do, put them power poles down and stay in that area and cast 360 degrees around the boat. Once that bite tapers off, keep lift them poles up and keep moving on. These fish right now can be caught in a variety of artificials. Like, you know, you always hear me talk about the jaywalker, but right now the Berkeley hijackers, especially with the bait on these flats, thin fish and color has been best for me. You can also use the bass assassin, and little PNVs. You know, the water's pretty clean up in the northern end. Darker colors are going to be the best. If you're trying to locate them and you can't find them, the bass assassin oval quick corks and a simple foreign sea shack. But suspending lures anywhere from three to four inch, twitch base like that savage twitch reaper has been really good to me. And if you're not an artificial guy, five shrimp and pilchards will also get the job done. I have a picture of this week uh, of Dan Bartlett. As you can see, he's got a jacket on in the morning. It's still so cool. We're getting the front, and there's nothing like getting the opportunity to fish all day and catch 20 to 25 inch trout in that northern end, throwing top waters. It's a blast. The offshore side, uh, as we're giving this report right now, we have a front coming through. Okay, so your calmer, more moderate days have been best, though we still have, like I said, minor fronts still passing through. Key is going to be for the King Mackerels and Spanish Mackerels, Naples North to Fort Myers Beach, from the beach line out to 20 miles. Now, there are kings traveling with the mackerel schools, or you can get on the wrecks and artificial reefs, or as you're running out there, concentrate on some of these large bait schools. You get in some of these areas, you control large lip plugs in some of these areas. Darker colors seem to work best. Also, you can get in some of these areas and control around it using silver spoons. But a variety of live baits are also working right now, whether it be pilchards, live thread fins, or blue runners. Now, if you get in some of those areas other than Spanish macro schools, nothing beats dropping down large live baits or trolling that big lip plug in those areas, and you'll catch, drop these baits down below, and you will catch a prime example, nice smoker king that was just caught in the last few days uh, fishing that pattern. Last species is going to be the permit. Now, that fight has been consistent and plenty of opportunity in between these fronts as long as the weather is moderate. The reports from several captains are all about the same right now, from Marco all the way up to Stump Pass. Heavy fish, big schools, along most noted wrecks and artificial reefs. Baits are going to be live crabs and live shrimp on bright colored jig heads, drifting across these noted areas so with a lightweight or no weight tree line. When the fish are on top, they can be sight casted. I have another picture of a great size permit still being caught in some of these big schools. The key is going to be for everybody until we maybe we get into May. Look at the weather, time these fronts, get under that moderate weather. I've talked to eight to ten captains in the last four days. You get out on those moderate days, you're going to catch fish like we talked about tonight. Thank you so much, Midnight. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the southwest region. Ronnie says, inshore, the tarpon are still heading north from Pavilion Key along the outer beaches of Naples. The cal calmer days seem to be the best. Uh, way to locate the fish pods. And then offshore, the cobias on the wrecks and artificial reefs throughout the region. Some are as close to seven miles using large live baits and some artificial swim baits. All right, well, did you know that almost any fish you catch from a kayak this summer 
can be entered in the CCA Florida Star Competition presented by Yamaha. Yep, most inshore and offshore species can be entered in the Native Watercraft Kayak Division presented by Bull Bay Rods for your shot at winning a new Slayer Propel Max 12.5 or a share of $500,000 in prizes. <laughs> this summer long competition begins Memorial Day weekend and ends Labor Day. And if you get registered before May 1st, you will automatically be entered in the contender raffle drawing. Go to CCAFLstar.com for more details. Coming up, we're talking with our friend from Bahio Sunglasses. And then the Takeuchi Keys region has the perfect paddle spot for your upcoming weekend. Plus, we're getting Captain Mike Holiday on the line in the Fish Bites East region to see what he thinks about all this yakin. We'll be back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Power Pole, Total Boat Control, Berkeley, Your Fish, Our Science, Bahio, Blue light blocking, radically clear polarized fishing sunglasses. Scoozy Shoes, the captain's choice for premium lightweight comfort. Sea Sucker, easy on, easy off, incredibly strong. Pen, let the battle begin. Kubota, together we do more. And the International Order of T. Roosevelt, protect your right to fish. As you can see, joining me is my friend Al Perkinson, the founder and the CEO of Bahio Sunglasses. You know, Al, there's a lot of competition out there, but why don't we tell everybody what makes Bahio so special? Well, Rick, I think maybe one of the most important things is the fact that we are independent, unlike our competition. Uh, we don't have people in foreign lands telling us what to do and how to run our business and what people who fish in Florida need. Um, we're real proud of that, and I think that independent spirit and you got it, uh, you know, just like me, that filters throughout our whole company. So when it comes to taking care of our customers, when it comes to being really passionate about making great products, that independent spirit is what drives us. Uh, all our employees have a piece of the pie. We all are owners of our company. Yeah. And if you're an owner, that makes a difference. A big and we're, difference. we're right here in Florida base. Right here in Florida, right up the road. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about all the variety of lenses. One of the most popular questions I get asked is, what lens should I use for what kind of fishing? Exactly, and, and it can get complicated. So let me try to simplify it a little bit. One thing is the technology that's in the lens. And with us, we block all the blue light and all the yellow light, takes all the noise out, makes everything super clear. So any lens we make is gonna have that clarity. When it comes to the colors, different colors are set up for different types of fishing. Now we had different kind of fishing all over Florida and we do it all and love it all. But you think about a blue or a gray, type of lens, and that's gonna be good for offshore. You think of a green or a copper, that's gonna be good for inshore, it has more contrast. Think of a silver, and that's really good for lakes, Lake Okeechobee, good for rivers, uh, for trout fishing out west. Uh, so those are your three basic lens colors and what they're used for. Then we have the low light lenses. Everybody need two lenses at, at least on the boat. Uh, if it gets cloudy, if the weatherman didn't predict the storm quite right, uh, pull out your low light lens and you can still see just perfect. So we have a pink and a purple that are both low light lenses. Now tell everybody about our great warranty, Al. You know, a warranty is only as good as the company behind it. And then a lot of people say they have great warranties. Our warranty is very simple. We warranty it for life. If you got a problem, you call us, a real person will pick up the phone and answer it, and we will take care of you, and that's our warranty. All right, so where are we going? BahioSunglasses.com for more info? Yep, BahioSunglasses.com. Uh, check out our Instagram page as well. You, you, did, you did a great job, as always. Well, thanks, Rick. Thank you for being such a great <laughs> partner. Where are we going next, Bree? Well, kayak fishing offers many advantages, but one of them in the Fish Bites East region, according to Captain Mike Holiday, is that you can launch from almost anywhere. Hello, Mike. Bree, how are you doing? You know, that's the advantage. You can, one, you can get away from the beaten path, and two, you can launch anywhere that you can pull over. We've got some great kayak fishing in my region, particularly in the Indian River where there's established kayak launches. Uh, Stewart Causeway has one, Bathtub Beach has one, North Bridge and Fort Pierce has one, Round Island and Vero Beach has one. Really set up for, for launching your kayak. Um, but, you know, really anywhere you can pull off the side of the road and drop a kayak in will work. Um, you can target snook along the mangroves, work the seawalls, work the docks, everything from live shrimp to topwater plugs 
and you'll do just fine. And then off Palm Beach County, with the water, there's deep water up close to the coast, you can launch in the surf near the Juno Beach or Lake Worth Piers and, you know, be fishing in 100 feet of water, just a short paddle from shore. A lot of the guys that go offshore just fish jigging spoons, uh, but you can also sabiki up some live baits, put them out behind the kayak and have basically a shot at anything that swims in the ocean. You can also launch on the island side of the Lake Worth Lagoon and fish snook around the mangroves or around the bridges. The real key for kayak fishing, just get away from the areas that have a lot of fishing pressure and that'll ramp up your action both inshore and offshore. So let's talk about some of the stuff going on inside. This windy weather has really ramped up the nighttime snook bite in the Palm Beach and Martin County area, particularly around the bridges. Um, a lot of nice fish are being caught off the Lantana and Lake Worth bridges, as well as the Roosevelt Bridge and Stewart. The fish have been focused on mullet that are pushing out of the rivers. So flare hawk jigs, uh, saltwater assassin, Artemis shads, and live mullet, those have been the top baits. Those big shads like that are really gonna work well. They mimic a mullet really well. In the daytime, the bite's been happening around the docks and seawalls, um, the Loxahatchee River, the St. Lucie River, and the intercoastal waterway are all good spots to go. There's also been some fish around the inlets and on the beach, just outside the inlets, either north or south, stay within like 50 yards of the inlet. Start your day in those areas, throwing topwater plugs, die dappers, or swimming plugs, or even a live mullet. Um, around the inlets of four inch sea sheds, pretty much money on those fish. I like the copper juice color. Average snook region regions 24 to 34 inches. I got a photo from Captain Buddy Kirkhart of Stewart. He led his clients to this nice St. Lucie River snook, and that fish ate a live pilcher. Yeah, it sure did. Let's go ahead and go offshore there, Cap. Yeah, you know, this has been a great spring for blackfin tuna, particularly on the southern end of my zone, say from like Jensen Beach south all the way to Boynton Beach. The fish are most active in low light, really early and late in the day, and uh, on the on the cloudy days. Um, push button hell seems to have a very consistent bite, but there's been a good crowd out there every day. It's like a parking lot. The best bites are in anywhere from 140 to 300 feet of water, just on the outside of the Bonita schools. There's still some Bonita or some early season Bonita showing up. Get it? You catch them, move a little further out, you'll find those black fish. A lot of the boats doing well are drifting or power drifting and flying a kite. For bait, anything from a live goggle eye to a pilcher to a thread fin, even a mullet will work because it looks a lot like a flying fish. Put them out on 30 pound fluorocarbon leader and three go circle hook. Average black from the regions, 15 to 25 pounds. I got a photo of a black fin from Mike Long of Stewart. He caught that black fin in 145 feet of water on a live goggle eye. And the other bite we got, April or May are the kingfish months in my region. And we've got plenty of fish around, but they seem to be on the move a lot. So very difficult to key in on. One day they're on the Loran ledge. The next day they're on the roll down off Jupiter. The next day it's the eight mile reef off Stewart. So you, you just need to cover a lot of water, work the reefs and wrecks, really any offshore bait schools that you see until you find the fish. There's been some big fish in the mix. You can target them with a number four wire double hook stinger rig and anything from a live goggle eye to a small blue fish. The bigger the baits seem to be better right now on the big fish. If the wind goes west, anytime in the next two months, head to the Kingfish Hole off Hope Sound or work the beaches north and south of Fort Pierce or the Rio Cove. Average king of my region is gonna be 15 to 25 pounds. And I got a photo of a big fish uh, the Salty Days charter boat out of Port St. Lucie got that big king off the Six Mile Reef, and that fish ate a live thread fin. You know, Mike, a few weeks ago, our good friend, friend Scott Martin kicked everybody's butt in Okeechobee. You got any reports on bass this week? I, I do, and, you know, the, the bass bite on Head, Headwaters Lake in Fellsmere remains one of the best bass bites in the country. Anglers are reporting lots of good fish coming out of the deeper holes. I was talking to Captain Nathan Schellen of OkeechobeeBassFishing.com. He's been working the vegetation along the edges of the canals with either shiners or top water plugs. He's catching big fish and big numbers. He said the average fish is two to four pounds. Uh, it said the bite kind of starts off slow uh, in the morning, but then picks up as the day warms up. You want to start your day throwing top water prop baits or frogs, working them with long pauses. That's been the real key. Pause it for a long time. Fish a June bug colored tap out worm rig wacky style along the edges of the hydrilla mats in that deeper water. And, uh, you know, it's a 15 to 40 fish morning with some big fish, some 10 pounders caught. 
Uh, there's been some really big fish caught right now. I got a great photo that, that Nathan Shellen sent me of Doug Smith. That was in Headwaters Lake. That fish is 13.2 pounds. It had a dead shiner. It was 27 and a half inches long and 26 inches girth. And 13.2 uh, pounds, man, that's a big fish you don't see every day. Man, Hot that's day. a girl I'd like to have a date with, Bree. I just want you to know I never caught one that big would. myself. I, me too. Good I'm job, good. Mike. Thank you so much. We're going to go nice. ahead and take a look at the TH Marine hotspots from the East Region. Mike says the Pompano off of the beaches on South Hutchinson Island, sand fleas, fish bites, shrimp on a triple hook surf rig, and then you want to fish offshore for a mixed bag of dolphin, tuna, sailfish, kingfish, and 120 to 180 feet of water off Sloan's Curve. Use live goggle eyes, thread fins, or maybe troll a ballyhoo for bait. Speaking of fish bites, it's yes. time to get ready for the Shoreline Showdown Surf Fishing Tournament Series presented by Fish Bites. Four tournaments, one championship, and over $75,000 in guaranteed payouts. You can fish just one tournament or all of them for a chance to qualify to compete for the title of the ultimate surf angler. For more information, visit shorelineshowdown.com or scan the QR code on your screen to check out the various dates and locations. You might see a familiar face over there at the workbench. Dave's quite it. the surf angler himself. I want him to be the surf it. angler of the champion. Champion, he will be. <laughs> all right, some of I my too. favorite memories in the Takeuchi Keys region is casting into the sunset on my kayak. So let's see what kind of memories Captain Ridge Murphy can paddle us to. Go for it, Ridge. You know, kayaking and paddle boarding is a huge activity all throughout my region. From creeping up on redfish and snooks on the flats or paddling an early morning workout. Um, kayaking is a nice way to explore the Keys and some cool places to check out would be the Flamingo down in the Everglades, John Penny Camp, Garden Cove, Indian Key, Historic State Park, Big Pine Key, Bahia Honda Key, uh, Curry Hammock State Park, No Name Key, and of course Key West. These are all great places you can go and just go out on a day on the water. As far as fishing in, from a kayak in my region, lots of guys are fishing from the boat ramps and they're working light tackle rods around the islands and the creeks for snooks, red, and mangrove snappers. And for the brave ones, they're paddling from the edges of the bridges to catch goliath groupers, tarpons, and the occasional snappers. Make sure to be mindful of the current and make sure to have a VHF radio and a safety flag or a bright shirt on because you're in a boater's world and you want to make sure you're seen. I got a photo of Colm Bukowski and he's got a nice red fish that he caught on one of his kayak trips. Nice. Tell me what, you, what else you got in shore there, son. Right now we got some snooks. Snook fishing's been really good up in our in my region, all around the islands and the moats to the backcountry of Key Largo, Isla Morada, and into the park. Use a Finwick Pro Elite rod, medium to medium heavy, depending on whether you decide to use live bait or artificials. Use a 25 pound to 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. Throw Berkeley saltwater hard baits like Cutter 90 or the Juke 65 to 85 in the most and around the island. But if you're gonna get up on the flat, throw a four inch Bass Assassin Sea Shad in pink, white, or lime truce. That way you can see it and so can the fish. You gotta remember guys, if you're using a uh, uh, light, light, something that's real bright, you'll be able to look at it and make sure you're watching your bait rather than you're watching the fish. And your hookup ratio is gonna go up a lot because of that. Tell me about the photo of Elizabeth, bub. It's Elizabeth Johnson. She's a client of mine and her husband, Brian Johnson. They came all the way from Alabama, and that's a nice snook that we caught back in the backcountry. That's beautiful. Yeah, all right, let's talk about offshore, bub. Offshore, I spoke to Chris Trossett, and he says that the cobia fishing is going off on the Gulf side wreck. He says chum heavy on the slack tides. That way they float up on the surface and use a live fin fish from 25 to 30 pound fluorocarbon liter. You can also free line crabs with a light lead to try and get it down past the little guys, catch a bigger one, or maybe even catch a permit. I have another photo of some nice phobias of the Curtis family that fishes with Chris over the last 12 years they've been fishing together, man. Wow. That's awesome. Look at those nice cobias. Some nice cobias, too. Real nice wow. ones. All right, quickly about the yellowtail, son. 
I spoke to Justin Miller off the Real McCoy out of Bud and Mary's, and he says the yellowtails are biting from 40 to 65 feet of water. Anchor or use your Rodan trolling motor in anchor mode and start chumming with a mixture of frozen chum, oats, and sand. So free line chunks of cut bait, shrimp, or even some fish bites on a light tackle rod with 12-pound and 15-pound mono tied straight to the hook. Uh, make sure you get a good measuring device, guys. Remember that the legal limit is 12 inches per person, or 12 inches and 10 per person. Tell me Got about one the... more photo, Go and ahead. that's little Robbie fishing with his dad off the real McCoy out of Bud and Mary's with a nice yellow tail. Great report Hello, this Robbie. week, Ridge. We appreciate all the pictures. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Florida Keys region. Ridge says that the snook fishing around the islands and the moats on the flats, you want to throw artificials and use Berkeley hard baits or bass assassin soft plastics. And then offshore, <coughs> Kobe is on <coughs> slack tide in the Gulf Rex. We have lots of chum ready. Don't forget, you have a few crabs just in case one of those permits show up. What do you think, Bree? I think you're a proud papa right now. I That's am. I he did a good job. You did. All right, now we've got some fun tournaments in the Florida Keys to tell you about, starting with the inaugural Key West Sailfish Tournament, April 11th through the 13th, a two-day all-release sailfish contest with optional categories for heaviest tuna, dolphin, and wahoo. Next is the Marathon Premier Sailfish Tournament, April 18th through the 20th, where Proceeds supports Mission Fishing, a group that organizes fishing trips for special needs children and their families. Then is the Marathon Offshore Bull and Cow Dolphin Tournament, where a guaranteed $18,000 goes to the top anglers who catch the largest largest bull and cow dolphin combined. And last is the Nick Sheehan Dolphin Rodeo in Isla Mirada, which raises money for college scholarships for Coral Shores High School graduating seniors. For more information on these Keys tournaments and more, head to flakeys.com. But next, we're checking in with Dave Farrell for Taco Marine New Products at the CCA Workbench. Dave, what's on the product menu over there? Oh, well, we got some brand new products, and I definitely could have used some of this this past weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I let the dog get on the boat. Oh, dirty times. All right, we're checking in with Captain Jim Ross in the real legend Central East region with a variety of species to target from your paddle vessel when we come back. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Alta Equipment Company, where uptime matters. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Abyss Battery, power your pursuit. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Discover Crystal River, Florida. Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. Best lures, period. And Maverick Boat Group, makers of premium boat brands Maverick, Hughes, Pathfinder, and Cobia. Well, we're here at the Taco Marine New Products at the CCA Workbench, Dave. Yes, sir. And we got a lineup tonight, so we let's do. just jump in there. First off, we're going to start with your personal sunglasses. Yes, the my Sigsby favorite. The Sigsby Park from Bahio. The, the brand new Sigs. Yep, the Sigsby. Sigsby Park is the real name, but we call them the Sigs. Uh, what's really cool about these is they're, you know, narrow temples, and they got the pin hinges, and they're a full wrap. So, yeah, you know, they, do wrap. they wrap all the way around your face, keep out the sun and the wind, you know, great fishing glasses for that. And it's a medium fit. I personally, I have a huge head, I but I have a small face and um, the mediums really, the medium fits really fit good and tight around my face. And that's, that's, that's what those do. They're really good for that. They have seven polarized lens colors, as you heard earlier, and with the lapis lens technology, which takes out 95% of the blue light and keeps you know, your lenses and your vision really, really clear. And that's very important when we're on the water. They also have four frame colors. Uh, this is the ivory, I think. Is that the ivory or the glossy black? Glossy but they have, an, black. they have the glossy black, the ivory, the light blue. And all of these glasses have the nice rubber uh, temples right. and on the nose pieces as well. So that when you put them on, they stay where they're supposed to. They're yeah, not they slipping do. all day which can be a pain in the butt, especially yes. when you get sweaty. Correct. So go to BahiaSunglasses.com to get the new Sigsby Parks. Okay. Next, we have the Starbright Ceramic Wash and Wax, which you had something to do with creating, I hear. I've um, been waiting my lifetime for this, two years. There you go. Well, I, I could have used some this past weekend when I let the dog run all over the boat and put a million little <laughs> paw pads 
pads on. Uh, this cutting edge technology will keep your boat shiny and clean. You know, the, it's got a really good strong wash, right. and it's backed up by the ceramic finish at the end. So that ceramic, once you get a good wash, keep, gets, gets everything off your boat, the ceramic keeps stuff from getting on the boat again. A, a, a nice replaceable polymer there is, what, and a sacrificial polymer actually is what it is. And it shields the boat from rays, the sun's rays and stains and, and anything that can get on your boat. And it'll stay cleaner longer if, when you use that it ceramic. beads water like you can. Believe. Instantly, once you put it on there and rinse it off, it's beading already. It's, it's really cool to see. And you just mix two ounces of that with a gallon of water and just wash your boat like you normally would and you've ceramic and washed it at the same time, which is amazing. You can wash it with a cloth or a brush just like you would normally wash and wax your boat. That's so, right. Shammy it off and if you got bad water like I do, we're gonna shammy it off so we don't have any water spots on our... There you go. So get, get you some of those at Starbright. Starbright.com. Exactly. Next, we got the Eagle Claw folding net. That's the folding one right there. Lightweight, heavy aluminum, comes in three different sizes, 15 by 19, 12 by 13, and a 15 by 19. It got the rubber coated nylon in there that protects the fish and helps protect prevent tangles and your hooks and stuff from getting into the mesh, Perfect which is always a pain. kayaking inshore. It is because it collapses and it gets really small and, uh, and, and you know, you can store it very easily. What's really cool here is we got another Eagle Claw product is the roll top fish basket. And this was initially made for ice fishermen to keep their catch, right. but this is great, be great for a kayaker who's wanting to keep, you know, a redfish or two right. or some trout. Right. Uh, so simple. Super convenient uh, fish storage. It's rubber coated mesh again, keeps fish all day long. It's got a heavy duty Velcro, Velcro closure at the top and a right. zipper on the side so you can dump everything out. Got one minute left. Eagleclaw.com. Good, Good job. Close. Next. We got these really nice art pieces from Florigens. Um, this is these are handmade arts, and they also make some apparel as well. And they're they capture the essence of the sunshine sunshine state. You know, we have one on our wall up here all the time, and we actually, they actually make some for Texas as well. Uh, the Florida man flag is the traditional with the red and white and the yellow. Uh, it's made out of yellow pine and poplar. It's got a little torch on it to give it a little rugged look, just like the Florida. And this is and this is the this is the marathon flag, and this is you know gets you that uh, cedar and pine look, and it also you know looks like it's made to go on a on a on a house in Key West or something. It's you know? beautiful. It's got the nice you know the They're individually numbered. Yes, you yes, see that? yeah, yeah, yeah. And he also has a this is the this is the black walnut and popular flag. Uh, really nice hardwoods and and uh, rare wood. And, and like I said before, he also makes them for Texas. So we have a Texas show, so we always have one from Texas. And I know we have a bunch of guys who really like their Texas flags. You think the guys like a Florida flag, wait till you go to Texas. You, you never stop seeing this flag everywhere you go. Where so. do we go to find it, Dave? Florigens.com to get the Florida ones and Lone Star Artistry to get your Texas flags. You got it all in. I don't know how, but I'm hard. very impressed. Like their flags. They love their yeah. flags. JD's Are you here. Kidding? I hope I, JD's he is. the guy He's right here, some. right behind me, I, I the hope, artist. I hope that uh, I didn't mess it up too bad. No, you, you did great. You did great. <laughs> I want to buy one. All right, the Real Legends Central East Region kayakers are leveling up, so let's hear what the experts are doing with Captain Jim Ross. Hello, Jim. Hey, hey, gang. I tell you what, kayaks sure have come a long way over the last 20 years. Yeah, they've gone from these little plastic things that you just kind of paddled around in circles to these things now are fully equipped machines that have power poles, electric motors, GPS fish finders. They're basically capable of chasing everything from blue, you know, blue gill to blue marlin. Now, in my real legend, Central East Region, a lot of anglers take their saltwater sass and lures to the Mosquito Lagoon, searching for redfish, trout, other stuff like that, when they're sight casting to these fish. But you know, those same guys, you know, we get adventurous. They get out there on the beaches with some live bait and they chase the tarpon, cast on their pin authority 8,000 spinning reels and get drug up and down the beach halfway across the Atlantic Ocean. But I tell you, with those motors and some of these pedal drive systems, they can really control the fish a whole lot better. So no matter what type of fishing you like to do, you can do it in one of these modern kayaks on our Space Coast waters. Now, speaking of redfish, the redfish have been showing up really good along the mangrove-covered shorelines of the Banana River, Indian River, and Mosquito Lagoon this week. Live shrimp rigged on a one-eighth to one-quarter ounce jig head is a great choice uh, if you're just 
sight casting to specific fish. Um, you know, you want to cast up under those branches and roots. That's where those fish want to be. Um, anytime when there's a little grass, though, especially a little later in the season, you'll start to see them moving on out and getting into that grass a little bit better, especially up in the mosquito again. You can also catch them on a uh, circle hook rigged with some chunk mullet or some chunk ladyfish. And I like to fish around the mullet pods. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. Um, one, the mullet really kind of tend to act like a sentry. Uh, so if something's coming, a, a dolphin's coming, a boat's getting too close, the, the redfish can kind of key off of the mullet and say, okay, something's, something's going on here. And so they feel a little safer. But you can also use the same mullet to your advantage because you can stay way off the mullet pod, make long casts with an assassin or a topwater plug, and you can catch a lot of fish around mullet pods. Um, and you know what? When you're casting up under those trees and branches, I've got a photo here. Um, you can get snook and redfish out from under the same tree as we did this past week over in the Banana River. Nice job, and bud. Store, Go ahead. Our lane snapper are doing really good, Rick. Right now, the Bells Real Legend Central East Region, you're on a natural ledge in this region, and you're in 70 to 90 feet of water. It's pretty sure you're going to come up with some lane snapper. But the artificial reefs are also holding them, especially the ones out of Ponce Inlet right now. Cut baits, live fingerling mullet, and live shrimp are all good baits to use. You can use a two-drop rig. You can also use some small vertical jigs, uh, you know, little, the regular speed jigs and catch these fish as well. Now, most of these snapper are running two to three pounds, but we've got a couple of them that have been in the four to five pound range lately. And then my last species offshore is triple tail. So the triple tail bite was really good last month. It's on again and off again. When they're on, they're really on and it's really good. And they're hanging around just about any kind of floating structure, buoys, channel markers, weeds and debris. There's all kinds of things out there that you can find them hanging on. But sometimes you'll actually hang out, find them hanging around slicks. So if you if you have a slick, especially have a slick with a scum line in it, don't be you know don't be too quick to just run past that thing. Take a little bit of time, especially if you have a tower boat. Get up high and look down in the water because a lot of times they'll sit down four or five feet in that slick area. Live shrimp or small flies are are great once you spot them, once you cast over to them. And you know what? If you get too close, they become a little skittish. So you know most of the time you want to stay back just a little bit. And our triple tail are actually running pretty good right now in that 5 to 10 pound range and I've got a picture of Robin here holding a, a nice one that she caught the other day. There she hey, is Robin. looking good. good. <clears throat> Alright bud, thank you so much. Great report this week. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Rodan Marine Systems hotspots from the Central East region. He says big speckled trout from Vero to Wabasso fish live mullet. Croakers or pilchers near the mangrove points and spoil islands where the mullet schools are congregating. And then offshore, lane snappers in 80 to 90 feet reef use cut baits like squid and sardines or a big, large shrimp uh, to catch fish up to four pounds, quattro pounds. I'm laughing because that video for B-roll that we had in Triple Tail was my first trip ever with Jim Ross. <laughs> That's so In my cool. neon orange sweatpants and my neon orange, you know, 23-year-old body. Woo! You look like sherbet on that boat. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well. So, Rick, actually, the CCA Homestead Banquet was a total hit last week. It really was. Tell us you about know, it. Bree, the cool part was that we were able to honor Dr. Guy Harvey with the Ted Forrester Award. You know, Jimmy was How there. Cool. Jimmy Johnson, the coach, was there to help me present the award. He was a recipient a few years ago. The other thing that was so neat was that we also, if you were a table sponsor, you got Guy Harvey artwork that was not just something that he had donated through uh, a new painting. He auctioned right. off a brand new original. Beautiful. And then he was so gracious, he took care of everybody. We had over 400 people there, That's and amazing. he signed autographs till 8.30. I made him, I had to make him stop, otherwise he was gonna miss Aww. dinner. And then all of this would not have been possible the without crew. the crew, yeah. you know, without our, our uh, team. So, you know what, thank you so much for everybody. We raised a lot of money that night. It was a very special night for Guy Harvey and conservation. The green team, make it happen every time. Yeah, Loved man. it. Well, congratulations. The Casa Vieja Southeast and Discover Crystal River Northwest region are ready to launch. Coming up next, so stay hooked. And remember, to keep up with everything fishing in Florida, make sure to head to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter and to see new fishing adventures subscribe to our YouTube channel Captain Rick Murphy if you scan that QR code you can also see our new merchandise we'll yes. see you soon Get your hat. the Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by 
StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Berkeley, your fish, our science. CCA Florida, the voice of recreational anglers for over 35 years. Front Runner Boats, performance built offshore fishing boats made in the USA. Takeuchi, from world first to world leader. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com and Strike Zone Fishing. Welcome back, everyone. The Casa Vieja Lodge Southeast Region is another very popular kayak fishing destination. So let's hear where to get started with Captain Jimbo Thomas. What's up, Jimbo? Hey, Bree, Rick, Dave, and everybody in the studio there. Well, you know, most of the new kayaks are totally rigged out with rod holders, bait wells, GPS, depth machines, and a lot of other cool stuff, which makes them suitable for any kind of fishing. When the weather is right, it's roughly a two-mile trek to get to the deep water, which I'm told is about a 30-minute uh, paddle. And Dania Beach is a very popular starting point is to head offshore because the deep water is pretty close uh, to the beach there. Now, on the days when the weather isn't right for offshore kayaking, those kayaks are also great for fishing along the shorelines of the bays, creeks, and flats, where their stealthy approach is uh, not as likely to spook some of those shallow water fish. Now, most of the county and state parks are kayak friendly. There's a kayak ramp at Chapman Field and also at Snowden's Dam, which are both in South Dade. I'm sure there's plenty of other spots. And those are great places to explore the western shore of Biscayne Bay. But then the wind, when the wind is too much for fishing in the bay, those kayaks are great for exploring the Everglades or fishing the local lakes and canals for both largemouth and peacock bass. Now, my buddy Joe Hector, he runs the Extreme Kayak Fishing Series. He has both offshore and inshore tournaments. He has the nation's only uh, kayak billfish tournament, along with the exotic species tournament the, that he holds at Lake Ida. And then he has another tournament series called the Summer Slam. For more info on those tournaments, you can go to extremekayakfishing.com. Now, staying inshore, Sea trout are still being found in decent numbers on and around the grass flats from Rickenbacker Causeway north to Holliver Inlet. There's been lots of small fish, but there's also been some bigger ones up to four pounds mixed in. Bulk of these fish are being found on the flats that are holding schools of bait in anywhere from four to eight feet of water, and they're being caught on small light pilchards, herrings, and pinfish. You want to fish those under a popping cork, or you can use a jig head, a bass assassin jig head, with the three to four inch gulp shrimp that's also getting bites. And on the high tide, these trout have been on top of the grass flats and as that tide falls, the potholes and edges of the flat have been the most productive. And these North Biscayne Bay sea trout, they're an ideal target species for anybody that's out there on a kayak. Now I got a photo here. This is uh, Rick, I didn't get a last name, but with a 22 and a half inch Biscayne Bay trout that he caught aboard Go Hard with Captain A.B. Raymond. And they've been catching quite a few up, up in North Biscayne Bay. Nice. Now, going offshore, we're starting to see more and more black fins, and black fin tunas, that is. These black fins, which have been roughly in the 20 pound range, are being caught on live baits, uh, herrings, pilchers, sardines are working the best. You want to fish them under the kite, or if there's not enough one for the kite, you can drift those baits anywhere from about 100 to 250 feet of water. And since these tunas are usually, hold on, I lost my light here. Since these tunas are usually a little bit on the uh, shy side, you might want to scale down on, on your leaders and fish 20 or 30 pound fluorocarbon leaders and some circle hooks. Uh, they're also going to bet, bite best later in the afternoon just before the sun sets. And if you're lucky enough to find some pilchers, which have been kind of non-existent down here, to live chum with, that'll help to bring those tunas up to the surface and get them fired up. There's also been some kingfish and sails biting in those same depths as those tunas. And then we've also been seeing a few mahis starting to show up offshore as well. Uh, been catching them offshore and on the edge. And I wouldn't call it a run, but there's been enough definitely to make a peak offshore worthwhile. 
keep an eye out for any bird activity, especially frigate birds, as well as any floating debris. And what uh, is a good idea is to troll some rig baits and r and mahi magnets. Look for those frigate birds, troll under the frigate birds. Once you locate the fish, you can cast small light baits or cut baits to them. We've also been catching some nicer sized uh, mahis under the kite, and they have been finding us base, uh, versus them, us finding them. So I got another photo here, and this is a 22 pound mahi that we caught aboard the Thomas Flyer, and he ate a mahi magnet under a frigate bird. Nice there job, Jimbo, on the Thomas Flyer. As always, good job, bud. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from Jimbo's region. Jimbo says inshore fish the North Biscayne Bay grass flats with small live pilchers for sea trout and the mag mangrove snappers. And then offshore fish live herring and pilchers late in the afternoon in 90 to 180 feet of water for sailfish, kingfish, and blackfin tunas. You should know better when man's giving his report to be messing with a karate man. See, you're over there holding your hand because you hit my hand while we were trying to play around while he was giving his report. You can't be messing around. Anymore. I can't be messing around. I'm just excited. The Mahi are making their way for Mama's Day. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, okay. I can't wait. I'm okay. excited. Okay. That's my Mother's Day wish. It's a nice big mahi. All right, we're staying stealthy and wealthy kayak fishing in the Discover Crystal River Northwest region. So let's hand over the paddle to Captain Jeff Hageman. Go for it, Hag. Kayaks are a great and stealthy way to fish my region. Less expensive than a boat. Pretty much maintenance free. Most of them are rotor melted, so there's not a whole lot of cleanup to do when you get home. Uh, easy to transport. I also make paddle boards and, and stuff that fit in backpacks now that you can inflate. So it's really easy to transport and go anywhere you want to go in my region. As far as fishing wise, they can be a whole lot less spooky and stealthy when you're trying to get into an area. They can cover a lot more ground than wading itself and you can get a lot of places you can't get wading. Get across some deeper canals and get on the other side of stuff and, and back in holes that you don't usually see. Um, as far as launches goes, we've got kayak launches all over the place. Fort DeSoto, Weed Island, they've got trails. We've got lots of rivers and springs you can go in. Uh, if you don't own one, there's places you can rent them. Uh, Weeki Wachi, Fort DeSoto, Weed Island, Crystal River, just to name a few. And it's a great way to get out and see old Florida and see some wildlife and catch some fish while you're doing that. But awesome way to explore. Man, selfie. All right, tell moving me. On, go ahead. In, moving on inshore, Captain Brian Sawyer of Old South Expedition at a home assessor, but it's a good snook fight right now from Chaskowitska to Crystal River. Uh, the warmer weather right now and the warmer weather conditions making the snooks right now move around a little bit and get out of their wintertime haunts and out on the flats. He's found the best bite right now is the top of the high tide and the first of the outgoing tide. He's free lining anywhere from a four to six inch pinfish next to the mangroves or on hard rock bottom with a three to four rock trocar circle hook, depending on the bait size, and a three foot section of 30 pound fluorocarbon meter. And I got a great snook photo from Captain Sawyer from a recent trip. Nice. Yeah, good picture. Yep. All right, what else you got for me, Papa? Moving offshore, Captain Bobby Bradley out of Stan Hatcher reports a great sheep's head bite right now, 20 to 35 feet of water, on structure um, is the place to be right now. Live fiddle crabs on a half ounce jig head or a little heavier depending on the depth and the tide. While you're out there, try drifting off the structure a little bit with some shrimp and you might find some hogfish while you're out there too, Captain Bobby says. And I got a photo here of a couple really nice sheep's head from Captain Bobby. Nice. Uh, far. Bring in the it. plethora of fish. All right, tell me about Big Nasty. What's happening? <laughs> Captain Rob, my boy, Big Nasty Charter out of St. Pete. Red grouper bite right now. Uh, these beauties have been anywhere from 120 to 140 feet of water. You want to use a bottom rig with 60 to 80 pound fluorocarbon meter, a six aught to eight aught hook, depending on size bait you're using, and six to eight ounces of lead, depending on the depth and the tide. Redfin herring has been his bait of choice, either tipped with squid or without. He says also live bait's working pretty good too. Right now it has been a little windy, but if you can get out there, it's a good break. You can get a good break in that wind. The fishing has been really good. And I've got a fire truck of a red grouper photo with Tyler aboard the Big Nasty. All right, so I got a question about the Big Nasty. Bub, you're talking about them running offshore to 120 to 140 feet of water. 
Hag, how far is that essentially roughly off of St. Pete? Uh, he's actually running out of St. Pete and running down towards Boca Grande where it's going to get a little deeper, a little quicker. So covering that kind of water and kind of heading southwest, it's a little quicker than getting straight out of St. Pete and getting to that water. But you're looking at about 28 miles to get to 100, so just a little bit past that in St. Pete. So is he fishing structure or is he just kind of bouncing around in some Swiss cheese type of bottom, which was Paige would refer to, a, you know, a bunch of broken bottom? That, that Swiss cheese bottom is limestone and red grouper love it. We've got lots of it from Crystal River all the way down past Boca Grande. And that Swiss cheese bottom is just holy limestone down there that the wind and tide and waves have broke up over the years and makes holes in it. Right. And that's what creates those habitats for those red groupers that they love. We're going to so talk. We're going to talk more about that throughout the season. Thank you so much. Great report this week, Hag. We're going to go and take a look at those Ella Key Marina hotspots. Jeff says, in shore, snook on the outgoing tide around the mangrove points and pockets use pinfish and sardines as bait. And then if you want to go offshore, guys, hogfish, grunt sea bass on that flat rock and sand bottom, use cut shrimp on a knocker rig to catch those hogfish. We want you to join Rick, Dave, and I here for our live studio audience shows like this one. Yeah, man, come on. Come on. Make sure you scan the QR code on your screen to sign up for our next show, which is next week already, and join in on set fun like these guys and gals have. We've got gifts given away and the commercial breaks. It's a fun time, so make sure you sign up. We're almost out of steam here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, but we have one more report to go. Next, we're paddling all the way into the Sea Sucker Panhandle region with Captain Patanine, so stay with us. The Florida Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Fenwick. Feel everything. Island Lures. Tournament Tackle. The IGFA. Every fish, every water, every angler since 1939. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy. 30 years of fishing for adventure. Berkeley Prospect Chrome. Real legends, available at bellsflorida.com. And Taco Marine, master the catch. Today's PowerPole tip is about the total boat control package. When you put a PowerPole charge in your boat, a PowerPole move on the bow, and our shallow water anchors on the back, you save over 80 to 90 pounds on your boat compared to the competition. That's a 43% weight savings. To put that in perspective, that's 20 bags of ice out of the boat, 10 gallons of fuel, or 1,300 jig heads coming out of the boat to give you a shallower draft, better hole shot, or more top end speed. That's the Powerful Premium brand. It's hardcore anglers building the best products in the marine industry, backed by the best customer service here in Tampa, Florida. To learn more about Powerful, go to Powerful.com, and that's your Powerful tip. And those are numbers you're going to remember from that's Powerful. For sure. 1,300 J guys. <laughs> All right, there are lots of upsides to being one with the paddle in the Sea Sucker Panhandle region. So let's see what we're targeting with Captain Pat Deneen. Close us out, Pat. Hey, Bree, I tell you what, kayak and paddleboard fishing is extremely popular in both the bays and the gulf up here in the panhandle. The paddleboarders have the, the visibility advantage of standing, while the kayak anglers, you know, that low center of gravity and profile are certainly much better in windy or rough conditions. But either method, the boats are tricked out with rod holders, electronics, and other features, making them pretty hardcore fishing platforms that can be launched and recovered anywhere you have access to the water. And another advantage is stealth. I mean, kind of like the wade fish in there, quiet. There's very little footprint allowing anglers to get close to their quarry. Uh, Gulf side, you know, the, the kayak anglers are targeting everything that boat anglers are targeting. It's not uncommon to see kayakers several miles off the beach catching snappers and mackerels. Inshore, the primary targets are generally going to be redfish, trout, sheephead, and Spanish mackerel. And there's a photo of George Lister out. He's showing off a beautiful blackfin tuna he caught this spring off in Navarre Beach by slow trolling around the kayak reef system. And that's been a pretty consistent fishery there, Rick. They've been that, getting them every year for the last several that years. That is How so awesome, dude. Fun. Yeah. All right, what else you got nice for me? Nice full-grown blackfin. Uh, staying inshore, Rick, the redfish have been consistent throughout the panhandle. 
big bull redfish or in the passes and along the beaches while slot fish are spread out throughout the bays. In the inlets, you want to use live baits like finger mullets or croakers fished off a Carolina rig with enough lead to hold the bottom. The beginning and end of the falling tide is usually the best. Along the beaches, reds are being caught by set fishermen. They're target, you know, the set fishermen, they're targeting Pompano, but they're also catching some red fish. And when conditions permit, you can sight fish those red fish with light colored lures or, or free line live baits. Smaller slot fish are around the docks and on the grass, sand flats in the bays. If you're fishing the docks, use a live shrimp or a minnow on a lightly weighted Carolina rig or under a float on the flats and along natural shoreline. You want to cover some water by casting spoons, topwater baits, or weedless soft plastics. And that's been pretty consistent. Moving offshore, mango or vermilion snappers are being caught in good numbers. You're going to find them on natural and artificial bottom, 80 plus feet of water. But the better fishing right now seems to be on the deeper spots, 130 to 200 plus feet of water. Use a two to three hook chicken rig baited with cut squid or minnows. And often, if you fish too close to the bottom, you may catch more ruby red lips or squirrel fish than mangoes. So vary your depths when you're, when you're fishing. Find out where those mangoes are holding the best. Uh, you can also expect to catch a few trigger fish while doing this. Both those triggers and mangoes are extremely good eating. And then finally, offshore, Spanish mackerel are still being caught in good numbers by trolling the second bar and along the color change. Straw rigs, gotchas. Spoons and Christmas tree rigs are the most popular, you know, lures to use. Uh, many boats are going to troll four rods, two on top, and two using small planers to get their lures down a bit. Just to the east or just to the west of the inlets can, can be the most productive. Spanish mackerel are great eating when cooked fresh, but you can also smoke them and make some fantastic fish dips. So, that's what's going on in the fan handle. So, Pat, I got a question for you. You know, you've been with us since the very first day. And I want to ask you, you know, when you get calls for people, from people to, to do a charter, what are the right questions to ask? If anybody's watching and they think they want to hire a guide, what should they ask? Oh, I mean, well, it all depends on what, all right, first off, I'm going to be here X, Y, or Z, whatever time of the year. What is the best thing to fish for then? And then take it from there. I mean, everybody has a target fish that they want to catch, but it may not be the best time of the year to target that fish. So I think that's the most important question. Hey, this is where I'm coming, and what is a good thing to catch at that time? A typical day of charter fishing, what does it include? Do you just provide the bait and all of that stuff? Yeah, just uh, for me, Rick, it's show up with sunglasses, appropriate uh, clothing. I've got everything on the boat ready for the day. So really, to show up on time with a good attitude. That's a good advice, oh. but Well, I'm going to be showing up Friday to fish with you on Saturday and Sunday to film <laughs> the Sportsman's Adventures for 2025, and I'm looking forward to asking you all these questions personally. Yeah, I can't wait to see you, Rick. Uh, a freshman or two, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. exactly. All right, bud, thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from Pat's Panhandle region. He says that in shore, the Santa Rosa Sound between Navarre and Gulf Breeze, the redfish around the docks on live bait and trout in the canal mouths using paddle tail soft plastics. And then offshore, weather permitting, head out to the spur for daytime sword fishing with strip baits and squid and 1,200 to 1,600 feet of water. What do you think about that? Bert? You're going to fish with Patty Pants? Yes. Did you me. call him and ask what, what's uh, biting up there or uh, what? Of course of I course did. Of course you and did. He said we're going to have a Mac attack. A Mac attack. We're going to have fun. Yeah, man. All right, we paddled ourselves out here on the Florida Insider Fishing Report, but stay hooked to find out what we're gearing up to catch next week when we return. We'll be right back. All right, next week we're talking cobia, so make sure you tune in. I know you saw a few photos of some pretty decent cobias caught, so next week we're going to have a lot more of that. But we want to thank our live studio audience, our first one of the season. Y'all have been great. So yes, energetic. The have. clapping's been amazing. We just had a great time here on the show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yak gear. Sure Yak gear. Yak gear is a really way to go, man. Awesome. That's some good stuff. Has been absolutely awesome. You guys were good too, I have yeah. to say. And thanks yeah. to the dads for bringing the kids because it is a school night, of course. Yes, well, it's time to go. Thank you all for joining in. We'll see you next week. Go get those fish. Take your yak gear out.